A lot of us in the hobby enjoy the miniature painting aspect of it, but there are also a good number of people who enjoy the kit bashing side. And there are even some people who enjoy just the building, and a lot of people enjoy the playing. So the question is, where are you in this hodgepodge or spectrum of different types of people in the hobby? And why does that matter in your motivation and progress? Welcome to the second episode of Hobby Mo Pro, the show designed for the miniature or scale model enthusiasts who's looking for more motivation and productivity in their hobby time. I've sort of developed a little chart or spectrum to identify where you are in this hodgepodge of different people in our wonderful hobby. My name is Louis of Louis Loves Minis and I produce vlogs every Wednesday, so do subscribe if you want to add more productivity tips into your YouTube feeds. This is what I call the hobby spectrum. So this hobby spectrum was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend in my gaming club, which is really the x-axis where you have the casual player and the competitive player. And he was just presenting me this x-axis as a way to sort of determine and pick the types of players you wanted to play with. And in the same sense, if you're playing with someone new, it's also your way to say, hey, we're doing a casual game, or hey, let's do something more competitive because I want to practice for this tournament. That got me thinking about the painting aspect of it, which is the y-axis, where you have your professional painter and your casual painter. Using these two spectrums, you can sort of pinpoint where you are in the hobby and that's the first thing that I sort of want you to do. Now before I get even further into the video, I want to let you guys know that the y-axis or the x-axis is interchangeable to a third spectrum which is your kit basher and your um, follow the instructions type of builder. And I've been working so hard to build a spectrum that includes all three types of types of measurements and I was using a triangle initially but I, I just couldn't couldn't work it out so um, primarily these are my two aspects in my hobby which is painting and playing so if you find yourself more of a kit basher yourself maybe you could replace the y-axis uh, with the kit bashing uh, kit bashing or building aspect or the x-axis with the kit, kit bashing and building aspect so it's very interchangeable do let me know if, if you guys find a better way of figuring that out, this out. But the main goal is to get all the aspects that you enjoy about the hobby and all the reasons and motivations that you are in the hobby for in one chart and you plot yourself in that chart. And to understand this spectrum better, I've sort of organized the quadrants or labeled the quadrants according to the types of YouTubers that I've seen. The person who would find themselves in the quadrant who's both the pro painter and the professional gamer is some, someone like Vince Venturella, who maybe I would call maybe like a hobby god right here. And then over here is your professional painter but casual gamer and that would be someone like Miniac or maybe Sorastro even who loves board games but they both paint so well. I love their painting style. And then someone over here well, um, I don't know, maybe Sangha from Tabletop Tactics. If the guy who runs Auspic Tactics paints, I feel they're more in the competitive scene. And then you have your beers and pretzels guys, which is, which is me. So that's my YouTube channel that you uh, better subscribe to. Now you, you can sort of figure out where you are in this graph. And, and it's sort of a nice, cool self-awareness exercise, I guess. But the, the great part is you can put like a, a little point where you are and then you can point out as your point A or your starting point and then point B to where you want to be. So I, I'm currently like a little close to the center of the beer and pretzels and I want to be, I want to cross that threshold between a casual player and into a competitive play, play style and from a beginner painter into a professional painter and I want to just cross both of those thresholds and knowing your point A and knowing your point B, you can already identify the types of goals you can tick off. So for example, if you're someone who just loves to, to play, you can see your entire path through a single x-axis. But if you're someone who sees yourself as 
you know, I wanna, I've been focusing a lot on the, on the painting, but I don't like it. I, I wanna actually lower my painting time and painting efforts so that I could put more time into practice games and move to the competitive side. So there's, there's no wrong or right, right way to move, but the only way to use it is to know your place in the graph and eventually you'll get to figure out should I buy more paints? Should I buy more codexes? Is it the right time to buy an army? Should I be playing this weekend? Should I be painting this weekend? It, it's so small decisions that help motivate you or drive you to do things, but the same sense, you can get like a big piece of paper and just write down where you are and write down where you want to be and write the steps that you want to do. By this month, I want to be painting busts maybe. Or by this month, I should join my first tournament. Or by this month, I should have my entire army painted. So it all depends on where you are and, and the hobby goals. So that's like probably the first layer or the easiest thing you can get from this graph. But there are three other bonuses or three other uses that I find when you plot your course in this graph. The first one is very, very exciting to talk about. It's basically managing your interactions with other people. It would be maybe I'm playing a casual game with a friend and I'm fielding an army full of infantry. And my friend is fielding like an army of custodians and then he wipes out my, in my, my entire army in like two turns. We wrap up the game by him saying, you should buy this, you should buy that, you should do this, you should do that. He's saying that because he's coming from a competitive playstyle. I'm playing from a casual playstyle and he's also a casual painter like me so he can understand when I say I know but I sort of want to focus on my painting more and level up to a professional painting style and collect more minis so maybe buying this miniature I think is great advice because it's sound advice as a professional player but you and I both know painting wise I need to paint through my backlog first. So things like that can go a lot sour. I, you, we see it a lot um, in online Facebook groups where people ask a question about something. Let's say someone's asking a question about competitive play, but a professional player answers that. Then there's a lot of friction in the comment sections and no one is saying the wrong thing, to be honest. Most times that I see it, nine out of 10, people are actually saying the right things. But what causes the conflict is People don't know where they are in the quadrants and they expect the answers to come from people who are in the same quadrant as them. When you're joining Facebook groups or you're going to your club, it's nice to know who or be aware of what quadrant that person belongs to. So you can also sort of curate your response back and say, I understand you're coming from a competitive perspective or I understand that your feedback is coming from a professional painter, but I'm an army painter. I paint in bulk, things like that. And a lot of that feedback actually happens in, in, in a lot of painting groups where you have professional painters and beginner painters, just a, a little bit of friction and style there. So that can be quite difficult. That's one way you could use your graph and sort of figure out who you are and try to sort of figure out who the person you're interacting with is in that quadrant and avoid less of that, that friction. The second use is that Knowing your quadrant or where you are in the quadrant makes it easy for you to find the right tribe. Surrounding yourself with people who have the same goals as you and the same skill sets as you or maybe a little better but someone who can help you get your goals done. is the, I like Vince Venturella's Facebook group name because it's called Painters Motivating Painters but it's just talking about painters in the y-axis and not the gaming aspect even though if there are a lot of gamers there if i'm a gamer i'm gonna go to a facebook group and i'm gonna interact because it's a painting a group and we motivate each other things like that could help and my war gaming group is a mix of casual and competitive gamers so we actually have niche groups in our own group where the competitive players talk and the casual players and the role players talk. And that just makes the hobby a more fun experience. This is something that happens a lot without us noticing that we, we always fall into the right groups of people. And that's something that we should always appreciate because every now and then, some people find themselves in the wrong group. They miscommunicate 
and you know feelings get hurt. Uh, find your tribe. It could be it could not be a Facebook group. It could be a, a chat. It could be within the gaming store itself. Last but not the least, knowing where you are and where you want to be um, plots that small line in that graph and it avoids you from overwhelming yourself. I'll use Games Workshop as an example because they're the types of miniature companies that releases a lot of models for different types of people. So I see a lot of hobbyists I know are into the hobby because of the wargaming aspect, but suddenly because Games Workshop is so great at their marketing, they're suddenly a board game player. There's suddenly a role play game there. There's suddenly from a 40k player, they're now an, uh, an AOS player. And all this is great, but when you're suddenly all these things in the span of two months, you're, you're all of a sudden over, overwhelmed. Another example is maybe you're a 3D printer, or you love 3D printing, and if you don't have that little plot on where you wanna be, it's easy to lose yourself and drown yourself in a ton of SDL files. So it's a good or a bad thing depending on how you wanna see it, but that little line between point A and point B allows you to decide what to buy, when to buy it, and how. So for example, in my case, I got into 40K because I wanted to start collecting Space Marines. So my first goal was just to paint Space Marines. Once I got some Space Marines, I felt like I wanted to play them. So I was both now a casual painter and a casual player. And I'm in that phase where I've been doing casual play and casual painting for the longest time, and I've recently done commissions. So I plotted out this course where I'll start doing more commissions, I'll start this YouTube channel, I'll start painting busts, and then I'll join a tournament. So all those things helped me up my painting game and also a little bit on the competitive side. And that helps me plan my hobby life without being overwhelmed by outside extremities or other hobbies telling me, buy this, buy that, you should do this. It's a breath of fresh air. It gives you that control over yourself and the hobby. So to end this video, tell me what kind of hobbyist you are in the comments and leave this video. And maybe a couple of months after, go back to the video and check and see how far you've gone. It's a good place to make it your um, peg or your standard or where your, start, or your starting point is. And maybe six months from now, you remember where you were, you look back and, hey, yep, I used to be that guy, now I'm this guy in the hobby. Or you can sort of realign, wow, I really sort of lost my, my way in the hobby. So um, make, make this a nice little starting point for you in the hobby. And do give me a thumbs up if you think this video helped you out. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching to the very end. I'll see you next week. And I almost forgot. Don't forget to hobby every day because hobbying every day keeps the sprues away. <laughs>